Hey guys, it's Julie with Julie's Designs. Today is another thrift to treasure video where I pick four items that I've either thrifted, was given to me, find on the side of the road, whatever, and I turn them into something that is more my style, and then I take you through the process of what I do to them so y'all can kind of see the before and after, and I use just different techniques and tools and stuff like that. So if those are the kind of videos that you are into, I have an entire playlist, and if you subscribe, then you will catch these videos every single week. I try to post them at some point during the day on Mondays. And today is just like an amazing day in South Louisiana. I have all the doors open to the shop, which I normally do anyway, because you can see what an amazing view I have out there. And then maybe once I finish this, I'll go out there and you'll show y'all what I see every day. So that's why I enjoy being in my workshop and having everything open. But today is just oh, one of those rare just amazing days with zero humidity and the weather's great and all the kids are outside. So it's a great day to be working in the shop. All right, let's get to the projects. We have some really cool wood today. So I found these two pieces separately, but when I saw them together, I was like, yes, I need to do something with that. So the plan is to take this wood and this wood and make a cute little box for probably a boy's room because this is totally you know boy colors but it's like awesome and chippy just the way that i like it so that'll be a pretty easy project and then i have this wood um this was the wood that was given to me from a neighbor's house it's nice and thick and so what i want to do is create some like um like rustic looking simple benches i've been wanting to do this for a while so today's the day i'm gonna make it happen because i have a lot of this wood and i'm thinking for when i do my craft show it would be great to have a few of them stacked up on top of each other and i can almost use them as shelves to put stuff up and of course they'll have a price on them and hopefully they all sell but that's my plan for this wood so we'll never made one before we'll see how that works out and okay i have this thing that i purchased from hobby lobby it was six dollars so you know it was probably half off so three dollars feel like three dollars you could do so much with this little christmas tree and they had different sizes i don't know if this is something new at hobby lobby or something they had before i don't know i'm not like an avid shopper of hobby lobby i just usually go in get what i need mostly greenery and then get out because i don't know about y'all but it's totally overwhelming and also sometimes a little depressing like do y'all find that when y'all go to hobby lobby or walmart or something and look at the craft section especially this year at a uh, walmart it almost looks like an Etsy shop and you see the prices they sell and stuff for and it's like oh my god like why would anybody pay for my stuff when they can come get this stuff so cheap but of course, I'm not, that's not the issue. I find that even if they have to pay a little more, people are more willing to buy local and make and get something handmade. But still, it's like, it's a little depressing seeing how cheap they sell that stuff for. Anyway, way off topic there. Um, I got this from Hobby Lobby. And one of my customers wants me to make an oyster tree. And I told her possibly that I would try it. And I hadn't figured it out yet. But when I saw this, I'm like, yes, that's the base that I need. It is perfect to make a little oyster tree. So once again, something I've never done before. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, and then I think this was in one of my haul videos. All it is is like this big, it was probably like a lamp at some point, but it's missing the top so it's really cool and heavy and i'm probably gonna have to paint it just to make the whole piece cohesive but the plan is to figure out what to put on the top that will be stable and stay on it and turn it into a riser these always sell very very well for me people use them to i think most of my customers have used them to put plants on so their plant can be up high you can put candles on it you could put a little baby christmas tree on it you know whatever you want there's just an endless amount of possibilities for these things they always sell super well for me all right let's go ahead and get started 
So when you walk out my shop, we are right on the water. And it's just a beautiful day. It is my favorite time of the year because the gators are gone and the pelicans come. So I'll be working outside and the pelicans, you can just see them dive in for fish. And I just love this time of year on the bayou. The first thing I wanna do to make the bench is cut the pieces of wood to size. So I want my top to be three feet. I decided that would be a good size for a small bench. And then the legs will be 17 inches. It'll be high enough for somebody to sit if they wanted, but also be a great size for a little decorative bench. And to make sure my feet are the same size, I measured the first one with a tape measure. And then for the second piece, I always use the piece of wood I already cut to measure. And that way I know they're the same size. Now for the feet, I decided I want them to be a little bit um, thinner than the top. So that way it doesn't go all the way across. You know what I mean? So I'm just cutting off a little piece about maybe an inch and a half. That way the legs will be a little bit smaller than the top. And then I'm going to cut out a triangle template for the legs. I like to cut it out ahead of time on a piece of wood. That way I can see if the height and everything is good. And then I'm gonna trace a pattern and then cut with my jigsaw. Now this wood is very thick, so it did take a little bit of time and effort to cut these, but you can definitely still cut thick wood. It is possible, it just takes a little more effort. And then for the top, I wanna round out the edges. I think that's just a nicer look. I'm just freehanding it with my jigsaw. And then once all the cuts are made, I'm gonna give the whole piece a good sanding. Okay, now I need to attach the bottom to the wood. I've already put wood glue and let it sit for a few minutes. And now I'm just sticking some wood screws into the pieces of wood to hold it all together at the bottom because I don't want any screws on the top. And then I didn't like how you could see the screws, so I'm just adding a small decorative piece of wood that I can easily put in with my nail gun and you won't really see any nails. And then I got a wonky nail. If y'all don't have one of these tools, it's just called a nail pull and it is amazing. It just clips those wonky nails right out. Okay, to finish off this piece, so that all the pieces of wood kind of blend together, the new cuts, the old cuts, the different types of wood. I'm just using my watered down Waverly antiquing wax and I'm just gonna put that on the entire piece and let it dry. I found a little spindle that will fit perfectly in the little hole of this old lamp or candlestick or whatever it was. So I'm just adding some of my Gorilla Glue just for extra security and I'm just going to hammer this in and it should fit nice and snug. This should not come out. And then I found something around my shop that was a circle that would be the perfect size for the top and I traced it and now I'm cutting out a circle with my jigsaw. I'm just using a piece of cypress, but whatever wood you have lying around will work. You could use a piece of plywood. And once I finish cutting it out, I'm gonna sand down all the edges. Now it's time to glue the top to the base. I'm just using wood glue and you wanna make sure it's centered. I like to do this by turning it upside down. But that's not possible on this piece, so I just need to look under and make sure it's centered. Then I'm going to use my nail gun just to secure it. And once the wood glue dries, this piece is not moving. All right, the last step is to paint this. I am just using my uh, paint sprayer and chalk paint to paint this. And then I'm going to get a wet paper towel and just wet distress this piece from top to bottom.
The first thing I want to do is paint this uh, cardboard gray. I've never made this before, so I'm not sure if there's going to be gaps in between the oysters or if all, it's all going to be close together. So it's something that I can't go back and do. So I just want to take the time to do it now to paint this piece gray. That way, if there is gaps, it won't be noticeable. All right, guys, so I went to edit my video and realized all the footage I shot this morning was corrupt. I think I figured it out. I think it was my memory card but I don't have footage of me putting this piece together. So I'm just going to walk you through it because I don't have another cardboard uh, tree thing. And, you know, um, Hobby Lobby is like an hour away. So I'm just going to walk y'all through it. What I did was I just glued on the oysters very slowly because you want to let it dry before you move on. So this was a very long process. I am absolutely not making another one of these. It took entirely too long, but it did come out great. So you wanna lay it flat and glue it on little by little. You start with one ring and then you go to the next and then to the next. And once I was done, I put some olive oil just on a paper towel and wiped it on. Um, to give like this shiny look you could also spray like a very glossy clear coat and then i use this is my favorite gold pen i'm pretty sure it's in my amazon store in the link in the description and just on the bottoms of the oysters i went and drew in the gold and just that makes such a difference and then for the top to do the top so it had a point at the top, the cardboard, and what I did was I cut off the point to be able to end it. And then I was able to put four oysters around the top. So I hope this helps. I'm so sorry about the missing footage, but if you have any questions, please let me know. There's lots of chippy going on in this piece of wood, so I definitely need to seal it in. That way it doesn't continue to chip. So I'm gonna put a few coats of Minrax polyacrylic in a matte finish. Now this will like deepen the color, but there's no way around it. You have to seal this stuff in. And I'm also gonna put it on the sides with the numbers. Okay, so I need to cut down the sides with the numbers. I need it to be the same size as the board. So I'm just using it to measure what size I need and then I'm going to cut the board using my table saw. Now I'm ready to put the whole piece together. I created a base just using plywood and then I put my antiquing wax mixture on it just to make it look aged like the rest of the piece. And now I'm just using my nail gun and I'm gonna just put nails on each side of the piece and then also at the bottom to secure the bottom. This piece ended up turning out way larger than I expected. So once it was together, I decided it would look great with some legs. Normally I would use little spindles or little pieces of wood that I already have, but I'm thinking some metal hairpin legs would be look amazing and just be that perfect mix of rustic and modern that I love in a little boys room. So I'm going to order me some hairpin legs on Amazon. So I won't be able to finish this box totally today, but I'll post a picture in the YouTube community and also on the group page of the, what it ended up looking like. And then I just put tissue boxes under it today so you could get the idea of what it looks like off the ground. I 
I hope y'all enjoyed this video and please leave a comment below. Let me know what was your favorite project that I created today.